This is the City of Rocks National Reserve in uh, southern Idaho. Off there in the distance, the, the two most prominent uh, high points there in, in the kind of middle ground with the rock rocky surfaces, those are the Twin Sisters, a major landmark uh, as people were coming west on the California Trail. Uh, I'm out here kind of exploring uh, a new area I hadn't explored before. I'm a little bit, maybe like half a mile to three quarters of a mile west or northwest of the Twin Sisters. And the most of the rocks we see uh, along the ridge line here are these kind of like light gray granitic rocks that may make up most of the city of rocks. These are 28 million year old granites that formed as magma cooled, maybe at a depth of about five to six miles beneath the Earth's surface, cooled and crystallized uh, to form this granite here. Of course, City of Rocks is especially well known, well known for being a, a rock climbing mecca uh, and uh, all sorts of great rock climbs in this region. But as magma rises, of course, it has to intrude or rise into rocks that are already there. So there has to be existing rocks that that magma uh, rises into where it cools and crystallizes and sometimes when we can see those relationships between the magma and the wall rocks around the magma chamber we get some really interesting features and that's what I want to focus on here so I'm actually standing on uh, a rib of quartzite you can see that these beds of rock here are kind of turned on end and form the ridge line to this this, uh, or the kind of backbone of this little ridge. If we come down here, uh, you can actually see the layering in the rocks here. So this is all quartzite with a little bit of mica in it. This would have all formed as um, sands and muds along the coastline. These rocks are about eight to 900 million years old from the Proterozoic. So these sands and muds have been metamorphosed into quartzites uh, and some of these schists or mica rich layers here. So this whole thing's just standing on end. And what has happened here is the magma that has risen into these rocks has caused these rocks either to rotate as the magma was pushing upwards or possibly as the magma was just sort of uh, moving into these rocks, they might have actually sank a little bit if their density was greater and rotated a little bit as well. So we're going to hit uh, two more places in this video. One is a pit that's right here that some time ago was excavated by someone. Um, and I think they were probably hoping for some valuable minerals here. But what this pit really nicely exposes uh, is a large dike that white stripe cutting across the rock is uh what we call an aplite dike uh, it's just a very fine-grained granitic material so the story here is these greenish and brown rocks are much older and magma was moving through the fractures of these rocks and so it made this big dike here and one simple rule we use in geology that turns out to be very valuable when we're trying to figure out relationships age relationships between rocks is something called cross-cutting relations so this white dike cuts through these more greenish rocks here um, and so therefore it has to be younger. It's simple logic, you, know, you probably could have figured that out on your own, uh, but it turns out to be a really valuable tool as we're trying to put together the sequence of events here uh, like a crime scene detective. So the wall rocks here you can see are also similarly oriented, more or less kind of uh, north-south, very steep orientation of these quartzites. I think what maybe happened here, a lot of this is actually not quartzite, but schist, uh, and you can kind of see a lot of the, the biotite, this black, blackish brown, very shiny uh, material in a lot of these rocks. Uh, so these are actually uh, mostly schists, metamorphic rocks. Uh, and in some places it's quite crumbly. Uh, and in other places, as you get closer to the aplite dike, this stuff's much more resistant. Uh, but we can kind of see that cool orientation here. And probably what's changed these rocks color and maybe made someone excited that it might contain some ore minerals um, is it shows good evidence of being altered by fluids. So hot fluids maybe coming off the magma chamber were pushing through these rocks and causing chemical reactions, which can in some instances cause uh, valuable minerals that contain maybe lead or silver, even gold, copper, things like that to precipitate out. So without knowing much else about it, that's my guess there, is that 
Um, that's why someone saw something cool at the surface or in that small outcrop, started excavating a little bit um, to try to see what they could find just beneath. So we're gonna head over to this small outcrop here, which I think might be the most spectacular. Um, and what this outcrop is gonna show us, we can see the kind of granitic rock here, that 28 million year old granitic rock, part of what we call the Almo Pluton. So it's a fairly small body of magma, maybe a few tens of square miles in area. Uh, and this is the main granitic rock that rock climbers kind of kind of swoon over and come out here to see. But again, what we're looking at here is more of the schist uh, down in this little gully here, this kind of brown rock. Again, you can see the predominant kind of vertical layering. And it's kind of rare to see the edges of the magma chamber, the contact that the granite makes with the adjacent rocks. A lot of times that area is pretty extensively eroded, weathered, and so you, a lot of times you don't really get to see it. But over here we get a really great view of it. And so, all right. So here we have the granitic rock. Uh, in places it has this hard weathered coating on it. This is what makes climbing at the city rock so great is this uh, varnish, this kind of patinaed surface here caused by, um, well, we're not exactly sure. Uh, it's usually iron and manganese oxidation. So it's some sort of weathering phenomenon here, but we can see sort of the, the granular nature of this kind of grayish granite. But the main thing I want to look at is up here where we get a nice clear view of the granite in contact with the schist. In fact, right there um, is a great example of a block of the schist. You can see the microcrystals in there <coughs> incorporated, completely encapsulated by the granite. So this is what we would call uh, a xenolith. It's a foreign rock body embedded in another. Has to be, of course, older than the rock that it's within. Um, but as we kind of move from the xenolith, which is pretty awesome in its own right, uh, over to here, we can see uh, this sharp contact between the granitic material and the schist. And you can actually trace this out uh, for quite a little distance here. Um, in fact, in this area, some of these go a lot further, but this was one of the more spectacular uh, contacts that I was seeing. So again, the schist, um, Proterozoic schist, probably like eight to 900 uh, billion, or excuse me, million years old. Uh, and then here we have it in contact with this granite, 28 million years old. So this surface I'm touching with my finger here represents, shoot, I gotta do the math, like, you know, over 800 or so million years of time um, between these two. So the older rock that was already here, the magma that rose caused some of these big chunks of rock to either completely melt, or in some cases they got uh, incorporated in the magma and rotated on end as we see here. And then the magma cooled and crystallized uh, to form this granitic material here uh, at City of Rocks National Reserve in South Central Idaho.